How you get the line across? Is the most common question onlookers have ever asked me. So check out how on this episode of How Not to Highline. Hi, I'm Ryan Jinx and welcome to my garage. Today we're going to go over the number one question we've always gotten while highlining. How'd you get the line across? We can break this down into three different ways. The first way is you simply walk the line across. The second would be to go down and then back up the other side. And the third way is to throw the line across. Let's dive a little bit deeper in the different ways we get the line across with some Yosemite case studies. Side note, we're going to use some Yosemite waterfall highlines as examples, but these were all rigged when it was still legal to do so. Because as of summer 2016, waterfalls were banned. So please don't go rig any of these waterfall lines that you see in this video, unless you've checked our current status of our privileges there. Let's first talk about Taft Point. It has really classic lines, and it was my training ground when I was learning how to highline. The 60-footer, the 100-footer, and the 170-footer. This is one of the easiest places to rig because you can literally walk around to the other side on all three lines. And Nevada Falls is the same way. You simply walk into the bridge, go over the bridge, and come back to the other anchor. So now let's talk about going down and then back up on the infamous Lost Arrow Spire. What you do is you rappel 275 feet from the rim into the notch, then you cross the notch and do a two-pitch climb, which is rated C2 or 512B. And the climber kept the rappel rope attached to them while they went up to the top of the spire. And now they can use that rope as a tagline to pull the wagon across. But what if you don't know how to aid climb or even free climb? Then you need to make friends in high places. Though there are some climbers that aren't too fond of highliners, there's a lot of them that think highlining is cool. So find a climber to join your team. Going down and then back up doesn't always involve climbing. Let's look at the big lines at Taft Point, for example. If you cross the goalie using the 60-foot anchors, there's a 350-footer. If you use the 100-foot anchors, there's a 700-footer. And if you use the 170 anchors, there's a 960-foot highline. But how do you get those lines across that massive goalie? Well, there's two different ways. You can repel the cliffside with a 200 meter rope or three 60 meter ropes, and then scramble up the slope side, but if you fall, you're gonna die. And if you are gonna have that much rope, you can just start on the far anchor and then repel the slope side, have somebody drop the tag line, since it is a vertical cliff, grab it, and then you can ascend or just grigory your way back up the slope side, staying safe the whole time. And once you have your tag line or your rope between the two people, then they can just pull the webbing over. The same methods apply to the 700 and the 960 footer. Because of the way the goalie slopes down, you can repel off the 960 or 700, then scramble horizontally back to the 60 foot anchors, grab the tag line, walk back to your rope that you repelled, and then go up that. Then you just walk your tag line on the tap side to whichever anchor you're gonna rig on. Now let's take a look at Icorn Pinnacle's 200 footer. This one's a little bit easier. You just hike down to the base of Icorn Pinnacle, you do a one pitch easy free climb, once you and your partner are at top, you can use your climbing rope as your rappel rope, and then the third person at the base can clip your tag line to your climbing rope. You pull it up, and now you have your tag line between you and the other side. Mathis Crest is also similar, except with that one, you start at the bottom of the U, and you have to climb both sides. You have two people tie into the either end of the climbing rope, and then they climb up both sides. And the climbing rope is now between them and can be used as a tag line. The short lines at the rostrum is the same way. You rappel down to the notch, cross it, and climb up an easy free climb. And then your climbing rope can be used as the tagline. But what about the longer lines at the rostrum? You're almost a thousand feet up at that point and it's really not worth trying to go down and back up to the other cliff. So this is when we get clever on throwing the line across. If you're just at the 20 footer at the rostrum, you just wind up your rope and toss it to the other side. But the 200 foot gap between you and the far cliff is way too far to be throwing a line. So what we like to use is a fishing pole. Since we can cast a fishing pole about 200 feet, we do it here at the rostrum. Even though it's not steep where we cast, it is mossy and we like to be tied in all the time. So we set up a rappel rope and go as close to the edge of the cliff as we can. And please be careful when you're casting a fishing line, you're throwing a lead weight towards your friend's heads. And then we reel in a three millimeter tag line. And once we have that between us, we go back up our rappel rope and then walk over to whatever anchor we're gonna rappel down to get to whatever line we're gonna rig. And Upper Falls has a similar situation. You can't exactly go down and up the other side, and the bridge is too far up river to walk it around. So what we do is when we set up our rappel to go down to the nose, which we have to set up anyways, instead we rappel down to the water first to grab the tagline that we throw across. To be able to throw our tagline far enough, we tie a three millimeter rope around a little rock that we find up there and tape it to it pretty good. And then that person throws the three mil tied to the rock across the river so it doesn't hit the person, but lands in the eddy so they can rappel down and grab it out of the water. And then once they grab the tagline, they clip it to themselves, they go up the rope, 
and then repel back down to the nose. Now they have a line between them and the tension side of the anchor, so now they can pull the line across. And lastly is my favorite case study, Vernal Falls. Not only was this line beautiful, and not only was it amazing to have a million gallons a minute fly by your head while you're trying to high line, but it was one of the most complex setups we've done up to that point. Originally, we tried to throw it across the top of the waterfall and then go in front of all the trees until we got down to our rappel point. That turned out to be a ton of work because we were always 20 feet short whenever we were trying to throw the line across the river. So after some sketchy shit, we finally got our 200 meter, 10 millimeter static rope from anchor to anchor and it went over the waterfall. So we threw it over the waterfall thinking we'd have our tagline between the two anchors. But instead it got stuck behind a flake and chewed our rope up. So a couple weeks later, we attempted to get the line across downriver this time. So Scott Hong was on the trail side and came close to the river, but within safe distance. And I ended up hiking all the way around, crossing the bridge, coming back and rappelling to the ground on the opposite side. I had my three millimeter tagline with me and he reeled that in. We tied that rope to the end of another rope to the end of another rope, and we ended up going back up to our anchors and had our line across the Vernal Falls. So sometimes you just gotta get clever on how you're gonna get that line across. Some other people have found clever ways to use potato guns, bows and arrows, and even drones. But in any of those situations, when you're trying to get your line across, use a tagline and not your webbing because it would compromise it. But if you're gonna be doing funky stuff like throwing rocks or casting lines or even catching stuff, and you're near a cliff edge, be clipped in because that is the most sketchy point of any high line. So be clever and stay safe while you get your lines across. Trying to get taglines across gaps can be really sketchy. Therefore, you shouldn't high line. Hey, don't be a dummy and go rig dangerous sports after watching a guy in his garage show you how to do it. But just make sure you go with an expert the first time you go highlining. But until then, check out these other episodes and don't forget to subscribe.